This is the How to Beach channel. Welcome to the channel. This is your first time here. Uh, this is a place just real quick where we talk about beach gear. We do beach gear reviews. We talk about different beaches, things to do on different islands, St. Thomas, St. John, um, St. Croix, Puerto Rico. We go to Florida. When the world opens up, we'll do more beach tours. Um, so if those are things that interest you, please consider sticking around and subscribing to the channel. Um, but today I know you're here just because you want to find out what the travel restrictions are in St. Thomas. At the end of the video, I'll also talk about the British Virgin Islands if you're interested in traveling to the BVIs. So let's tell you what they are right now. I did an April travel restriction video for St. Thomas as well and for the Virgin Islands in general. And I'll link to that up here if you're interested in going and checking out that video. I went into further detail about all of the rules and regulations in that video. And today I'm just going to kind of do the quick and dirty so that you can get what's going on right now and what the updates are from the previous April um, travel restrictions. All right, I get a lot of questions about what the current status of the virus and how many cases and that stuff. So I'm going to tell you quickly, as of today, May 3rd, there have been 103,134 tests done. Of those tests, 99,996 have been negative. That gives us total positive tests of 3,138 tests. Um, and of those, 3,049 people have recovered. So we have 62 active cases of COVID-19 in the Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands. That includes St. John, St. John, St. Thomas, and St. Croix. There are currently nobody hospitalized in St. John, nobody hospitalized in St. Thomas, and there are three people hospitalized over in St. Croix. So we're doing a really good job keeping the numbers down in that respect. If you're planning on coming to the islands, you do need a test. Um, and there is a portal that you can upload your, or download, download your results, upload. There's a portal where you can enter your test information and once you do that, they'll give you a barcode. And then when you come through the airport, you just show your phone with the barcode on it and zippity doo, you're out the door. I'll put a link to that portal in the description down below so you can check that out. If you come without a test, you are required to quarantine for 14 days. And if you don't put your information into the little portal and get the barcode on your phone, you can fill out the paperwork in the airport when you arrive. So really the only updates that are different from my April video. So if you want to go back and watch the April video and see all the rules and regulations, you can. So the updates to that video are um, there's no more curfew on the beaches. So previously beaches were closed at 5 p.m. on weekends and holidays, and that has been lifted. So you can go to the beach anytime you want with no restrictions and no curfews. Um, they did leave. Well, I shouldn't say with no restrictions because you still cannot have a DJ. So if you're hired a DJ for your beach party, that's out the door. Uh, no grilling on the beaches, no live music on the beaches. So if you're setting up a band to play, uh -uh, that's out. And there was one more thing, no amplified music. So leave your boom boxes at home quietly and peacefully. Enjoy the tranquility of their beautiful beaches and you will be fine and with no curfews. The other update is to restaurants. Um, they are increasing capacity in restaurants. They said that restaurants pose less of a threat now than they previously did. So they can now squish the tables in four feet apart instead of six feet apart. So they'll be able to get a few more people into restaurants. So I know it's been crowded. It's been hard to get into some places. So maybe this will ease that a little bit, especially I know Red Hook's been crazy. seems like the little few fewer people I think have been here the last two weeks. So it's, I think we're kind of getting a little bit into the shoulder season. Um, just from what I've noticed on the beaches, the beaches seem a little less crowded. If you're curious about how many people are here, that's my scientific analysis. Looking at the beaches, I see less people. And I'll just hit the high points of what my April video said. Uh, wear your mask when you enter a restaurant. When you sit down, you can take it off. Um, when you stand up to go to the bathroom or to leave, you have to put it back on. Pretty much all of our stores are open. Um, the big box stores, the little stores, the, pretty much everything is open. Um, just wear your mask when you're out in public. Uh, when you're outside, you don't have to wear your mask if you're not around people you don't know when you're just outside. But when you enter a business, it's um, basically common courtesy and island norm to just wear your mask inside of businesses. And what else? If you're in a cab or a taxi or a safari, if you're just with your family, you don't have to wear a mask. But if there are strangers on, their, on the safari or in a cab with you, you have to wear your mask in public transportation. And I think that should pretty much cover what you need to know as far as what the COVID rules are for here. So uh, if you're interested in going to the British Virgin Islands, they, as you know, have been closed, closed, closed since this whole thing started. They are now open for business. You can travel to the BVIs if you want to. You, they do require that you have a vaccine. 
They have their own portal where you can upload your vaccine results and your test results. Um, they have some specific windows of time. I'll link in a description. In the description, I'll put a link to their website. There's like, I think you have 48 hours before you arrive, you have to upload your vaccine results and 24 hours before you arrive, you have to upload your test results. And I might have reversed that or that could be wrong, but that's the gist of it. You can do it within seven days of arrival. But they say if you don't do it and you don't fill the stuff out in the portal, you you will you will be denied access to the island, which is different from St. Thomas. If you don't enter your stuff into the portal on St. Thomas, you can still come to St. Thomas. You just fill out the paperwork um, with a person from the National Guard in writing, and then zippity doo, you're still out the door. If you come without a test to the to St. Thomas, they do require that you quarantine for 14 days. And that's it. That's that's what's going on here. That's our numbers. That's the rules. That's the protocols. Um, if this was helpful, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I also have videos on some of the best beaches, things to do here on St. Thomas. So check out my other videos. Maybe there's some information there that can help make your trip better. I have some gear reviews if you're thinking about what to bring to the island. I also show some different beach gear that's easy to pack, easy to travel with, and can save you some money from renting gear when you get here. So check all those out. Thanks for coming. Subscribe, like it, and uh, you keep supporting me. I'll keep making more videos for you. Thank you.